Next paper of the session is on classical crypto protocols in a quantum world. The authors are Sean Holgren, Adam Smith, and Fang Song. Fang will be giving the talk. OK, thank you, Weber. So good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Fang Song, and I'm going to talk about some joint work done with Sean Holgren and Adam Smith. Oops. Doesn't work. <laughs> Sorry about that. Here we go. OK, now we start off by asking a very basic question. So are classical cryptographic protocols secure against quantum attackers? And the answer is not necessarily. So most notably, several computational assumptions are broken by efficient quantum algorithms. For example, the well-known Shor's algorithm for factor and, and discrete log, and also Hargreen's algorithm for the principal ideal problem. And some may argue that in order to implement these quantum algorithms, we need fully mature quantum computers, which are way beyond the current technology. Right? So why should we care? Well, turned out, as shown by Crypto, Simar, Selvel, Simar, and Tab, uh, even very primitive quantum technology, like preparing and storing entanglement, will break, will make some classical two prior commitment scheme no longer binding, which is otherwise information theoretically secure against any classical adversaries. Okay, one may still say that, all right, so these are just rare instances, why not just use those unbroken protocols instead? Well, here's the general issue, namely, we know very little about how to reason about quantum adversaries, and many classical proof techniques may no longer apply in a quantum setting. A prominent example is rewinding, which I'll explain in much detail later. Okay? The consequence is that for many classical protocols, although they are not yet broken by quantum attackers, we also don't have proofs to show that they are indeed secure against quantum adversaries. Well, the situation is not that bad, though. So several specific tasks can actually be achieved by classical protocols with proof of security against quantum addresses. So in a breakthrough work by Watchers, he showed there are now proofs for NP languages against any quantum verifiers. And later, Hogren, Kola, Sin, and Jan extended Watchers' results, showing a larger class of languages also have their knowledge proofs against quantum verifiers. And then Damgar and Ludeman, they proved a class called conflicting protocol is also quantum secure. And in a recent work by Angru, he showed proof of knowledge protocols. So next we may ask, what else can be done? And more ambitiously, we want to we ask, using classical protocols, is every task achievable against classical attackers also achievable against quantum attackers? This could possibly be done either by proving the security of, of existing protocols or by designing new protocols to realize these tasks against quantum attackers. So in this work, we show that a broad class of tasks is actually feasible. That is, there exist classical secure function evaluation protocols against quantum attacks. And this parallels the classical feasibility result due to Yao and Gorek, Mikhaili, and Wigerson in the 80s. Let me quickly remind you what secure function evaluation is. So here we have two parties, Alice and Bob, with secret inputs X and Y respectively. And they want to evaluate function F, but without revealing their secret inputs to the other party. So our result says that we can securely evaluate any function F that is efficiently computable, even if Alice or Bob is a quantum adversary. And more specifically, there are two steps towards our main result. First, we show a family of classical arguments goes through against quantum adversaries. And applying to existing work, we have that fully similar to zero knowledge proof knowledge is sufficient to construct quantum secure SFE protocols. I'll explain what fully similar to means in a few slides, but for those who are familiar with the terminology in secure function evaluation, it is actually equivalent to the formulation of a zero-knowledge ideal functionality. Okay? 
But unfortunately, we don't know if the existing zero knowledge proof of knowledge protocols are fully simulatable. So in the second step, we construct a new zero knowledge proof of knowledge protocol, which we show is fully simulatable against quantum addresses. And this completes the picture of our main results. Okay. Uh, of course, security is only meaningful if you have a rigorous definition of security. So we've also put much effort in the issue of defining security models, but I'm not going to say more about, this in, uh, about that in this talk. Okay, let me start from the first bullet and show you how to build SFE protocols from a fully simulatable zero knowledge proof of knowledge. All right, so the key idea is to identify a family of hybrid arguments can actually be adapted to work against quantum addresses as well. To recall, a hybrid argument tries to argue two distributions are close by making a sequence of small changes that transforms one distribution into the other one. Now, what if these changes are as simple as, say, switching the plain text of encryption? Then, in order to make the whole argument work for quantum addresses as well, all we need is a quantum secure encryption scheme, right? So we propose a general framework which we call simple Harvey argument to formalize this type of Harvey argument. And it is similar to the code-based games in spirit. But anyway, the details are not important. What's useful is that a classical work by Kennedy, Lindell, Ostrovsky, and Sahai their security analysis actually falls into our simple hybrid argument framework. So the result translates to the quantum setting immediately, showing that, oh sorry, we can construct quantum secure SF protocols from a fully simulatable zero knowledge proof of knowledge, assuming there exists quantum secure dense encryption and pseudo random generators. I'll tell you what dense means shortly, but notice that both assumptions are implied by say, the learning with error assumption. Okay? Now, we are only left to show a fully simulatable zero knowledge proof of knowledge. Let me first, uh, let me first explain what fully simulatable means. Okay, now consider a prover Alice who wants to convince the verifier about a true statement, say, a graph G3 color book. And in zero knowledge, the prover has a witness, but she doesn't want the verifier to learn this witness. So formally, we consider an arbitrary verifier, which could be a quantum machine with an arbitrary quantum auxiliary state yeah. And the output of the protocol, which we call the view of the, ver of the verifier, contains both the transcript and also the verifier's final state. Then we require that there is a simulator who doesn't know a witness, but is still able to produce a fake view which is indistinguishable from the real one. Okay, so this is the zero knowledge part. For proof of knowledge, in addition to simulate a real looking view, we also require that when, if the simulated transcript is accepting, then the simulator must also output a valid witness W prime. Okay, so this simulation plus extraction condition is what we mean by fully simulatable. Okay, so to, to explain why extra effort is needed to construct a fully simulatable zero knowledge proof of knowledge, I'd like to discuss a little bit about why zero knowledge is complicated against quantum addresses. Okay, now classically we know the main technique to construct a simulator is rewinding, where basically the simulator tries to answer questions from the verifier, just as the prover does. But without a witness, the simulator may not be able to answer all of them. So usually what the simulator does is that he picks a random branch from all the possible interactions and check if he could proceed successfully along that branch, okay? If not, he just goes back and tries again from the same input row. 
So classically, this is very easy to do because we can just copy row, the classical string row and keep trying to success. However, quantumly, there's a problem because this nature approach requires making copies of arbitrary quantum state row, which is prohibited by quantum non collinear theorem. And we're still even just checking whether the random gaze will succeed or fail made this draw real. Okay. And despite the difficulty, watchers show that it is possible to construct, to construct a simulator for quantum verifiers. And the key observation he made was that if the probability of success or failure of the random gaze is independent of real, then Rho is not disturbed on a failure attempt and, can, and essentially can be recovered efficiently for another attempt. So this allows generating a real looking view eventually. Okay. But this technique doesn't seem sufficient for proof of knowledge because we also need extracting a witness. And extraction typically requires combine multi-answers from the prover. However, what you're similar is in some sense oblivious because it doesn't remember any information about the current branch once it goes back. Okay. Now, I want to mention that if extraction is the only goal, then it is also possible as shown by Angu it is unclear how to do both simulation and extraction at the same time. All right, now let me give our construction of a fully simulatable zero knowledge proof of knowledge. And the essence is that we make sure a single answer from the prover will be sufficient to recover a witness. So we start with the coin flipping preamble and interpret the outcome of the coin flipping as the encryption key. Then in the second phase, the prover encrypts the witness and proves in their knowledge that the suffer text indeed encodes a witness. Okay? Now there are two properties of the coin flipping subparticle. First, an honest prover can always make sure the outcome is uniformly random. On the other hand, a proof of knowledge simulator can actually control the outcome. And this is the crucial property that allows a proof of knowledge simulator to do simulation and extraction simultaneously. Okay. Now there are also two properties of the encryption scheme we use. One, it is dense, meaning a valid public key is indistinguishable from a uniformly random string. And second, it is lossy, meaning if the key is uniformly random, then the encryption of any two messages will have the same distribution. And this lossy encryption essentially allows a zero knowledge simulator to give a proof to the verifier without knowing a witness. Okay? Now, with these properties, it's not difficult to figure out why this construction works. So I'm including the slides of proof just for completeness. Okay, now to put things together, recall that we've shown how to construct quantum secure SFE protocols from a fully simulatable zero knowledge proof of knowledge. And we constructed such a zero knowledge proof of knowledge protocol. Then combine these two. We have quantum secure SFE protocols in a plain mode, meaning we don't need any extra trusted setup. Now we can also show an interesting equivalence between coin flipping and zero knowledge proof knowledge. And this suggests that we can also build SFE protocols from a fully simulatable coin flipping protocol. And that's basically what's been done in independent work by Luneman and Nielsen, where they got very similar feasibility results. But there's, some, there's something more in our work which I don't, don't have time to discuss, but you can find in the paper. Okay, now at this moment, hopefully I have sort of delivered a message that some key pieces of classical crypto still hold 
even in the presence of quantum attackers. But many of the rest remains unclear. Okay. Now to wrap up, let me mention a couple of open questions. So first, can we extend our result to other settings, say uh, multi-party and achieving concurrent security? <coughs> and second, what's the optimal run complexity of these particles? Say, can we construct constant run, their knowledge, and conflicting particles secure against quantum adversaries? And another interesting question to consider is that, is there any natural two-party particle, classical particle, that is broken by quantum attackers, but not because of computational assumptions? Okay. I just stop here and I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you for your attention. We have time for questions. So I have a couple of questions. Uh, oh, sure. Does Go there ahead. exist uh, uh, concurrent zero knowledge which is secure against quantum adversaries? That I don't know. There, there's no protocols now to be secure against quantum attackers, achieving concurrent zero knowledge. And let's say you start with the UC secure protocol. That's right. Where assumptions are already secure against quantum adversaries. Now the assumptions, I mean in the classical work, there are assumptions like uh, secure encryption, serial generator. So we have to like, make stronger assumptions, say those encryption and also serial generators are also secure against quantum attackers. So given those assumptions, all the secure analysis goes through against quantum attackers. So any uh, classical UC secure protocol is also quantum secure? If no, not really, secure? not really. Okay, because you don't need to rewind. So what are the problems uh, in such cases? So yeah, that's a very good question. It's just probably most of those are still secure against quantum attackers. But the problem is, we don't know. We just have to be careful in every step of the proof. Right? So here we have shown a small class of classical arguments still held in a quantum case. Although we believe that maybe a larger class also held, but for now, it just, it's, it's just unclear. Okay. Uh, more questions? Just to maybe answer partly your last question here, uh, sure. there are uh, natural two-party uh, classical protocols for oblivious transfer based on the random oracle model. Oh, you know, random oracle uh, model. Yeah, so they're secure in the sense of they being super linear secure. Uh, if, if you, need, you need to work more to cheat than to be honest. Uh, so uh, there, just there, so, but just as Kassem did in the first talk. So, so, yeah. there, so there are classical protocols for OT that are very natural. They're secure in that definition against a classical adversary, provably so, mm -hmm. and they're broken by a quantum adversary. So the same protocol is classically secure uh, and, and broken by quantum. Uh, that doesn't mean that that protocol cannot be tweaked to become secure against quantum. But there is a protocol which is natural, okay. which is secure against classical and not against quantum. Oh, uh, in, nice. In the information, in the information theory. Information theory. Okay. Information theory exception. Oh. With, with random protocol. Cool. Thank you. Let's thank the speaker again. Thank you.